More than 50% of brand new puppy owners experience the puppy blues within a few weeks of bringing their new puppy home. And some experience the puppy blues up to a few months after their puppy arrives. How can this be? In this week's video, we're going to talk all about overcoming those puppy blues. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button to let me know you're watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be the first to get notified when next week's video goes live. All right, maybe you're a little sleep deprived or you've cleaned up one too many accidents. You're probably wondering if your dog is ever going to stop biting and learn to follow commands, am I right? All right, well, having a puppy in the home isn't easy. It's a lot of work and it can seem like you have an infant in the house. Only this one is furry and has razor sharp teeth. It's normal for new puppy owners to feel overwhelmed and frustrated by their pup's lack of manners. The constant biting, the repeated accidents, and probably a whole bunch of other things you wished your puppy would stop too, right? The puppy blues uh, is similar to what women go through after having a baby or what we call postpartum depression. As a new puppy owner, you may feel depressed and anxious. New puppy owners thought they were bringing home a cute, cuddly puppy that would bring them great joy and be a best friend and companion. Now, if you've ever thought, what did I get myself into? Or maybe this puppy thing wasn't such a good idea. Or maybe I have to rehome this puppy? Hold up, not so fast. It really does get better and there is a light at the end of the tunnel but it is gonna take uh, your puppy some time to adjust. You both are going to learn to work together. Remember, any great relationship is built on trust and good communication, and these things take time to establish. They aren't something that happens the instant you pick up your puppy. Remember, they just left the only thing they knew for the last eight weeks or so before you brought them to your home. No more litter mates to play with or mother to feed them or come running when they cry. Now they have humans who care for them in a much different way. The transition into your home can be a bit overwhelming for them. This is why they might not eat or take treats right away either. They might not want to play and they may pancake or lay down when you take them outside. You see, everything is new and overwhelming to them. Now, as for bonding and relationship building, this will also take time. It takes time to build trust as you get to know each other. It's easy to get frustrated with your new puppy when they first come home and even up to a few months after because there are so many things they can do like walk and run and play and jump and bark, yet they have trouble with potty training, crate training and following commands right now. And you probably look at them and they seem so much more mature than they are, yet they have the mentality of a baby, not even a toddler yet. As an adult dog, they will have the mental capacity similar to a two-year-old toddler. Think of it like this. Your puppy has absolutely no understanding of the words you say to them until you teach them each and every word you want them to know. To your puppy, they sound like someone speaking a foreign language. They need lots of training to learn the words you speak mean they should respond in a certain way. Your puppy's brain is still growing and so is their body all throughout the first year of their life. It's growing at a very rapid rate during that first year. Now, since their brain and their body are learning to work together, you will likely have to clean up accidents since their bladder can take a little while to mature enough to hold it for longer periods of time. Now, you can learn more about potty training in our new puppy starter kit. And you can find the link to that in the description below this video. You'll also discover that they want to put everything <laughs> in their mouth, including you. This isn't because they purposely want to hurt you, so don't take it personally. Puppies are drawn to movement and hands and feet. They move a lot. You can learn more about what to do when your puppy is biting by watching this video here. But for now, <laughs> Just know they have a natural urge to chew and need to soothe those sore gums. This means you cannot scold them for something that is so instinctual to them. But you can manage the space they are in by removing items that you don't want chewed. I want you to limit access to places where there are chewable things, such as couches and shoes, at the very least. 
at least until you teach your puppy what you want them to do or chew on instead of your belongings. And until they are past the teething stage, you are going to have to monitor and supervise them as well as redirect them to what you want them to chew on instead. Having a puppy in the home means you are going to be kept on your toes. You'll have to be proactive about keeping things out of their reach, just like you would a toddler learning to crawl or walk. I know it can be frustrating to come back into a room you had just left after only being gone a moment and there's either an accident or something got destroyed. Puppies really are like infants in that they need constant supervision. And if you can't keep both eyes on them, they can stay in a puppy pen or a crate. Puppies are like infants in that their sleep patterns are a bit off when you bring them home too. Now, sleep deprivation is a real thing with owning a puppy. And if you're anything like me, you don't function well on limited sleep. I get downright cranky and miserable to be around when I don't get enough sleep. Maybe your puppy is waking you every two hours in the middle of the night because they have to go potty outside. Remember, a puppy can only hold their bladder for one to two hours at a time per month of age when in a crate and even less time when they're out of the crate. Now, the more space they have to roam around in, the more frequently they will need to go potty outside. All right, well, at least you and your puppy are experiencing the sleep deprivation together, right? Yes, even your puppy may be sleep deprived. An overtired puppy can be a cranky, bitey, barky, unpleasant puppy to be around. This is why we want to make sure our puppies get naps throughout the day. Now for more information on what a puppy schedule should look like, be sure to watch this video here, all about the puppy schedule. I also think that new puppy owners who experience the puppy blues feel as if they don't have anyone to talk to who will understand. They don't want their friends and family to think they're giving up or that they can't care for a puppy. I'm here to tell you, you are not alone. We pulled our puppy training with Michelle Lennon Facebook group recently to see who was feeling the puppy blues. Within a matter of minutes, we had hundreds of responses of, yes, <laughs> I'm feeling the puppy blues. You can also join the Facebook group, Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon, by clicking the link below this video in the description. Now, you can't instantly make the first year of raising a puppy go away in the blink of an eye just to make things a bit easier. Besides, you wouldn't want to miss all those adorable puppy moments. You know the ones. Puppy's first bath, sleeping puppy, puppy doing cute things with their toys. But what you can do is learn what to expect. Knowing what's to come or what's gonna happen during the first year will be a big part of it. When you manage your expectations, you won't have unrealistic goals. Now, you can watch this video here all about the kinds of expectations you should have. Now, you can also work through the online puppy training course we offer with your puppy and the rest of your family. 30 Days to Puppy Perfection is like a puppy training blueprint covering everything you should teach your puppy and in what order. When you have clear guidelines and training tips to follow, it will make the whole experience so much more enjoyable. Learning together and teaching your puppy new and useful skills will also help you build a better relationship together too. Whatever you do, don't take your frustrations out on your puppy. This will break the trust and your puppy will not be eager to engage, train, and trust you. Yelling, hitting, um, causing any physical or mental harm will damage your relationship. Now, I can promise you with 110% certainty that your puppy never purposely does something to upset you. They do not have that kind of human thought process. If your puppy knew how to do what you expected of them, they would do it. Currently, they rely on what they know and natural instinct. Even if you taught your puppy a certain skill in one location, it doesn't mean they will be able to perform it in all locations. Each new location and stimuli is new and often very distracting for your puppy. This means dogs don't easily generalize a skill you taught them. So if you taught them sit and stay in the kitchen, they also need to go through all the training steps to learn that skill outside with lots of other distractions present. One important tip I really want you to take to heart and listen to me carefully on is be patient with not only your puppy, but yourself. Raising a puppy is not only about loving them and providing food and water to them, but also it's about learning how their brain works and how to teach them new skills. It's not like you can just tell them to do something. You know what the words mean. They don't, at least not until you teach them. So I want you to take a deep breath Give your puppy rest time in their crate, 
work through the training games in the courts, and soon enough, those puppy blues will be a thing of the past. Now, I've got one last thing to say about the puppy blues. Before I share my final thoughts, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you can be the first to hear when next week's video comes out. Now, I am not an advocate for giving up on a puppy at the first sign of trouble. I don't encourage you to get a puppy and then when the going gets tough, turn them over to a rescue group or just give them away. But, and this is a big but, if you have exhausted all options, you've tried professional training, and you've determined that your home is not the best fit for your puppy because of lack of care or space or their health or well-being is in jeopardy, then it may be time to make the difficult but well thought out decision to do what's best for your puppy. This does not give you a free pass to rehome your dog just so you can get a new one because that new dog will also come with all sorts of new puppy woes as well. You may end up with even more puppy blues than you did before. Now in the comments below, let me know if you or someone you know is or has experienced the puppy blues. 